Hey YouTube, what's going on? Lionheart here, and on today's video, I'd like to talk about Diona. Did you know she's a bartender at the Cat's Tail Tavern? Pretty cool. Anyway, in this video, I'll provide you with some tips on playing as Diona, review build options I've considered, and test her gameplay in both co-op and single player. Before we get started, I just want to say thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this video. It's awesome to have you here supporting the channel, and if you like what I have to say, I hope you'll consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and allows our community to keep on growing. So thanks. Okay, let's talk about Diona. Diona is a support character that specializes in cryo damage, healing, and shielding. She uses a bow to attack, which also applies cryo damage with charged attacks. By the way, did you know that bow characters charge more quickly in aimed stance? Fiona takes this to a new level with her fourth constellation, which allows her to fire charged attacks more quickly while inside her elemental burst. You can use this to apply cryo to enemies far away or deal supportive damage in a co-op setting. Diona's elemental skill fires cryo projectiles and creates a shield around her. It can be used in two ways, tapping for lower effectiveness and faster cooldown, or a press and hold for a longer cooldown but much stronger shield and cryo damage output. As you increase her talent level, the duration of the shield goes up, which allows for less downtime overall. At talent level 9, Diona will be without a shield for about 1.2 seconds on a tap and 3 seconds on a press and hold. However, since there is a travel time on the claws, the actual downtime will be much shorter. The shield from Diona's elemental skill is very powerful. First, it gains extra absorption bonus versus cryo damage, meaning the shield becomes more difficult for enemies to break if they deal cryo damage. This is very useful on floor 12 of Abyss. Her shield also blocks stagger from incoming icicles, preventing your character from being unable to dodge or attack. This perk is particularly useful if you plan to clear floor 12 with all 9 stars. Let's take a look back and see what can happen when you don't have Diona. STUPID ICICLES! WHY?! <laughs> it's too bad I didn't have Diona back then to help. Fortunately, that floor has become a lot easier since I added Diona to my team. Another benefit of the shield is that it increases movement speed and decreases stamina consumption after her first ascension, which is great on floor 12 where stamina is pretty much always low. One last note about Diona's elemental skill. At Constellation 2, the shield becomes more powerful and is shared with nearby allies for 5 seconds. This means you can shield an entire team and mitigate large area attacks in co-op, which can be very useful in the right situation. Next up is Diona's Elemental Burst, which creates a large persistent area effect that heals allies over time and deals cryo damage to enemies. While the energy cost is 80, 20 higher than Bennett's Elemental Burst, you can effectively reduce the cost to 65 with Diona's first constellation which provides 15 energy after her elemental burst ends. If you're fortunate enough to reach max constellation, you will notice Diona's elemental burst provides new benefits to allies who stand in it. If an ally is above half health, that ally will gain 200 elemental mastery. And below half health, healing becomes 30% more effective. This is great for increasing your elemental reaction damage or healing up more quickly. Lastly, at Ascension 4, Diona's Elemental Burst decreases enemy attack by 10% for 15 seconds, provided added safety for your team. Alright, let's talk about builds for this video. Our focus will be on Maiden Beloved, which provides a total of 35% more healing from Diona's Elemental Burst when using all four pieces. Why didn't I use two-piece Retration Bolide? The answer is that the shield strength bonus from Bolide is selfish in version 1.1 of the game. This means it doesn't transfer over to other characters. Since I'm not using Diona as a primary DPS, 
She doesn't stay in combat very long outside of co-op and would not benefit from the bonus. In addition, I want her to provide the most support possible to my team, and an extra 20% healing for maidens really helps a lot. If you decide to build maidens as I have, there are a few choices you'll need to make along the way. First, should you use an HP or healing bonus circlet? Second, should you use an HP or cryo damage goblet? And third, should you run an HP or energy recharge sands? Note I don't discuss elemental mastery here as I feel that stat is best reserved for bonus damage dealers. I'm going to tell you what I recommend and you can build that. But remember there are many ways to load out a character, and what you choose should be based on your goals for that character. When it comes to Diona's circlet, I feel healing bonus is the better choice. As you can see in this test, an HP circlet provides between 3800 and 4700 healing depending on the character's health. Remember, Diona is max constellation in this video, which is what creates the variance. With a healing bonus circlet, Diona now heals between 4300 and 5100, which is 450 more healing on average than the HP circlet. Of course, she also loses about 4000 health, which has some impact on her survivability. You can obtain even greater healing numbers than what I showed you here, depending on your other artifact pieces. For Diona's goblet, you'll need to decide what's more important greater healing and shields, or extra cryo damage. Many players will prefer HP, which with good substats can add to Diona's healing and supporting damage. However, I elected to go with a cryo damage bonus goblet. Even without optimal substats, I found the added damage to be more useful and her healing adequate without adding more HP. You'll have to decide for yourself what's more important. Lastly, for Diona Sands, I recommend HP if you are going with a Cryo Damage Goblet, and Energy Recharge if you are going with an HP Goblet. I do feel it's important to have at least one artifact with HP as a primary stat, since all of Diona's elemental abilities have HP scaling. However, I don't think you need to overdo it. If you already have one artifact with HP as a primary, consider Energy Recharge for easier elemental burst uptime. For weapons, I'm using Favonius Bow in this video. It's level 70, which provides 50% energy recharge. In addition, because her elemental skill hits 5 times on each press and hold use, there is a good chance at activating Favonius' passive and gaining extra elemental energy from a critical hit. This is the weapon I recommend for all Diona players. If you don't have Favonius, you can consider Sacrificial Bow, which provides less energy recharge, but has a chance to reset her elemental skill. Since the downtime on her shield is low, unless you are taking damage a lot, this isn't my preferred choice. But the reset does come in handy if you are using the shield to tank hits or block unavoidable damage. Aside from those two bows, anything else in version 1.1 of the game is suboptimal, as the remaining bows focus on increasing damage output. If that's all you have, use whatever bow you like, and keep an eye out for either Favonius or Sacrificial in your wishes. Okay, that about covers all the build stuff I wanted to chat about for Diona. In the gameplay ahead, I'll be using Diona with the following gear. Favonius bow, Maiden's 4-piece with these primary stats, HP, Attack, HP% percent, Cryo Damage Bonus, and Healing Bonus. This provides about 18,000 HP, 1100 Attack, 50% Healing Bonus, 172% Energy Recharge, and 58% Cryo Damage Bonus. Alright, let's go ahead and test out Diona's performance first in the Talent Book Domain. This one I picked particularly because lots of icicles drop, and so I feel like it's a pretty annoying place. So we'll immediately shield. You can see these icicles fall on us, and we also took an attack from one of the cryo slimes, and it did nothing. No interruption to our attack pattern with Diluc, and no damage, which is pretty cool. As we run away, we'll also be able to use our ulti to the slimes that had grouped up. 
and we'll be able to reapply that shield again to make sure that that attack from the abyss mage and the slime do nothing the icicle also doesn't interrupt our elemental skill where normally that would have stuttered us slam also does nothing you can start to see the power of diona's elemental skill right away from this demo just by coming in and using her elemental skill without any heal at all we're able to clear this domain with very little difficulty it's pretty cool of course, Diona is not a damage dealer, so most of the time she's going to be on the bench and we'll be playing other characters. But I'm intentionally bringing her in here just so that you can see the power of the shield and how we don't really get interrupted. It's good on all our characters. Here we'll take some icicles again, no interruption, and use our ultimate to gain additional iframes. So yeah, it's pretty great, I think. And again, another icicle and no interruption at all. Boy, this domain just became a whole lot easier because of Diona. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and switch over to floor 12 of Abyss. On this particular video, last time I edited Abyss to only include clears on one half where the relevant character was. This time I'm including the entire Abyss run, so you can see that we were able to push through floor 12 without any continues and clear nine stars thanks to Diona. So if you're not interested in the general clear and only want to see Diona gameplay, I have included for you a timestamp in the video bar. So that way you can use it to quickly skip to team two where Diona is. And if you want to see Klee beat everybody up on team one, that's what we're going to talk through here. But uh, no worries if you just want to skip and see Diona's content. Speaking of Abyss, I get a lot of Abyss reviews on my Twitch channel. People asking how can they get through floor 12, how can they clear earlier floors, and general advice for team comps. It's something that I offer for folks as a reward for channel point redemption. So if you're ever stuck on Abyss and trying to clear through particular content, you should swing by. I'm sure that I could probably help you with your own clear and at least try to point you in the right direction on both character composition as well as artifacts or weapons um, if you have questions on that. Here, you know, you can see that one of the great things on this side of the floor is we use a particular synergy of double pyro, um, Chi Chi for healing and for our cryo application, and Venti to group enemies. Uh, you can use any healer here, but I do think that Chi Chi's particularly value, just like Diona, and it's worth mentioning now since they both can heal and they both can apply cryo damage. Why do you need cryo damage for floor 12? Well, it's because there's Electro Fatui on both sides in 12-3, and if they shield up, and most likely they will shield up, um, you know, unless you're very, very, very strong and you can burst them beforehand, you're going to want to be able to break the shield. And it's cryo characters that are able to do that. So really great value. Anyway, here we're just going to go ahead and sustain up. We'll use Venti to help us charge up our energy, as well as shred pyro resistance. Only one enemy left. We can hit him with a charge attack as he's coming in. Throw our bombs. One more for Venti to get ultimate up for next floor, so we have all of our elemental burst for chamber two. And there you go. All right. For those of you who are interested in Diona, this is where we first run her. You can see that the team comp here is Child, Bennett, Diona, and Diluc, which gives us Pyro Resonance, as well as access to be able to melt Cryo Shields, and then freeze enemies as well with the combination of Child and Diona. Plus, I just really like playing Child. He's fun, and he does a good job clearing floor 12 with 9 stars. Anyway, we'll switch off here, and you can see Diona's shield already applied. This is already saving us from a lot of damage and that we would otherwise be taking. Also notice we're having an easier time moving around. Our stamina consumption has been decreased and our movement speed has been increased. Put it back up. We're already out of stamina, but we're still able to move pretty well. And of course, we're not taking damage from any of these attacks. If we're not taking damage, we're also not having cryo apply to us, which is a debuff, although there, just as I said it, cryo debuff was applied you self-apply cryo for a short time when you do diona shield 
So if you see it there right afterwards, don't be alarmed. It's normal. But look at all the damage we're shielding because of this. Here we're going to go ahead and kick the Ona's ultimate in. And the general idea was, hey, can I just tank through this frost cloud? But it actually deals quite a lot of damage. So that wasn't really an option. I used child's ultimate there to gain iframes. So that way I wouldn't take too much damage while I was trapped in the cloud and also ensnared. But here you can see, even though we had been attacking and touched the side of that ensnare there, we didn't actually take any damage. Again, thanks to Diona's elemental skill. Cool. And that's a three star clear for chamber one. All right. Also, one thing you'll notice in this clear is we got that sprint passive twice. Um, and I'll tell you, that is not a very good one for floor 12 because you don't sprint around as often as you'd like since you're constantly losing stamina. I do sprint a bit, but yeah, not very good power ups in this clear and still able to do is pretty nice. But here you can see, uh, for those of you not interested in Diona, you may want to skip ahead to team two for the, or for those of you only interested in Diona, excuse me, you may want to skip ahead to team two. And for those of you who are interested in just the clear in general, um, you can see that the, the overall idea on chamber two is you need to group enemies. So there are three options you can use for grouping enemies. Venti, of course, is the easiest and what I'm using here, but you can also use Sucrose or the Animo Traveler. Sucrose would ult right in the middle where the, um, uh, I guess, what do they call it? Monolith was what you're trying to protect. So Sucrose would place her ultimate right in the middle to draw everybody towards the monolith. And that's how you would get a grouping. And for Venti, you actually run to the side and shoot more similar to how the uh, Animo Traveler will shoot, where you basically align yourself to one side of group of enemies in a straight line to the other side. And then you use her ultimate. For Venti, it groups them in between. For the Animo Traveler, it'll just send a line out, right? And they'll get caught by the tornado and then they'll end up in one location. So yeah, pretty essential, I would say, to Team 1 when you're trying to clear Floor 12. Make sure you have one of those three characters and also make sure that that character has uh, the Animo artifact set on for resistance shredding. It's really going to help you a lot. We're just going to ultimate with Klee, run around to make sure we can collect Shangling's power up, a hot pepper, and uh, yeah, just take out the last remaining enemy. We have almost all of our ultimates up, but you can see that Klee's elemental burst is not up. It actually was kind of a mistake that I used it at the end there, and so now I have to clear slowly in order to charge it back up, and I'm primarily going to use Venti and Chi Chi in order to do that because they're not going to deal a lot of damage, and I don't want to accidentally clear this early. Um, and enter 12-3 without my elemental burst charged. I think it's really important when you go to 12-3 on both halves that you have all your elemental bursts available so you don't run out of time and you make the fight easier on yourself. There you can see Klee charges up right at the end. That's great. And you can, by the way, take your time on Chamber 2 since it's not time trial gated. It's just health gated. Uh, you'll see with these two on this side, you can't take too much time, but yeah. All right, so for those of you only interested in Diona gameplay, here's Diona, she's back. We immediately use the shield to avoid having any negative applications from all the attacks that start at the beginning. And then we're gonna go in and we kind of realize that we went for the archer first. Normally I actually go for the cryo slime first because of the ensnare and it's just easier to burst him down. It's a little bit out of order on this clear, but not really a big deal. We'll come over and clear that, run over to this guy switch over and apply shield once more and then focus on defeating the enemies around us we take the extra elemental mastery that's applied here and look to try and apply a good melt unfortunately the shield locked it then we switch back over to the archer used an ultimate to dodge the damage and also apply damage to him behind us and then the shields back up, which also allowed us to freeze with child. You'll see that that freeze ends up being particularly important to our 12-3 clear. 
All right. So these are both up. We have our shield up. It's going to be down by the time it's over. Our goal is to just quickly see if we can burst them down. And actually, we could have had Diona's shield up here. It was almost a mistake that we didn't have it. So you can see we took a lot of damage, um, both on Diluke and Diona, because we had ne neglected, excuse me, our shield application. With the shield up, the snare is doing nothing to us. An ultimate to keep them grouped together. And then at this point, I'm starting to look at, oh yeah, I need to charge my elemental bursts. So that's basically what I'm doing. And there we go. The greatest value add that you can see in floor 12 is definitely Diona's elemental skill. The elemental burst is good for extra healing, but it doesn't really shine until you get to 12-3 unless she's your solo healer, in which case you'll be using it a lot more than we did in this video. All right, so here's chamber three, and this is the first half. Again, if you're interested in only Diona gameplay, you can skip ahead to the second half. But here we're gonna go ahead and group enemies. We'll swirl Pyro into Venti's ultimate, and then we'll start trying to burst down the enemies. My clear actually on this first half is pretty sloppy. You can see I got greedy here using Please ultimate and uh, the shield went up on the Electro Fatui before I was able to burst him down. So then I had to switch to Chi Chi and basically attack the Electro Fatui sticking to him to try and break his shield with cryo damage. It takes quite a while to do it that way. So there he's finally gonna break. I'll switch over, use Klee and start bursting them down together. I get trapped in the snare, but because I'm not moving, it doesn't do any damage to me. So it's no big deal. You can see I'm also getting stuck. When when the Fatui die, they actually leave a big invisible uh, volume blocker. So I was actually stuck on the Electro Fatui there after he had died. As I was trying to get around to that pepper that Shangling had dropped. All right, so there I take a punch. That's another mistake. I knock them up into the swirl. I use the ultimate and I'm trying to burst them down, but I'm going to fail. They're going to just be too separated. I don't have enough damage. And you can see that uh, even despite my best efforts, he's going to end up shielding up. I switch to Chi Chi, I'll use her E and her ultimate, which will take most of his shield away, and then he'll drop after that, we'll switch back to Klee, burst him down with about 8 minutes and 37 seconds left. Normally you want, if you're going for a 9 star clear, at least 45 seconds left, but you'll see that I don't think that's going to slow us down. Immediately on the start of this, we're going to use Diona's ultimate. It's going to kick over there, we'll also shield, and now both of them are seeing the ultimate. With Child, you can see we're now immune to the Falling Icicles, thanks to Diona's shield. And because of the ultimate, we're constantly applying Freeze so that they're not able to move and continue DPSing us. This is huge. Look at all the damage we were able to apply in that short amount of time, thanks to the synergy between Child and Diona. Really good stuff. With both of those enemies dead, our focus ends up being on the Electro Fatui. We get a freeze thanks to Diona, and we also have the shield up, so we no longer have to worry about the falling icicles. Let me tell you, these icicles on 12-3, they really can be a nightmare, and the shield can make your life a lot easier. Unfortunately, the shield went up there, so we're going to have to switch. We drop Diona's ultimate here, and that's how we're going to start breaking the Electro Fatui in the background without having to pay attention to him. Look at that. We have everybody frozen together, a nice ultimate, and now everybody grouped like this has shut down because we've broken all the shields except for on the Geo Fatui. We'll switch to Diluke, use an ultimate. That'll do a bunch of damage. We actually neglected the owner shield there, so we got one stutter. But uh, you can see everybody is gone now, except for this guy. With the combination of all the skills we have left and with 12 seconds, it should be no problem. And there you go. That's a perfect nine star clear of floor 12 with Diona on team two. I think she added a lot of value for us. Her elemental skill allowed us to not take damage in a whole bunch of different scenarios. It avoided us being staggered uh, or preventing stagger for us when icicles were falling from the ceiling. And of course her elemental burst gave us the extra sustain we needed as well as the ability to break Electro Fatui shields, and of course, Elemental Mastery for bigger damage. Ah, I think this is a pretty successful run. 
if you level up Diona and add her to your floor 12 team, I think she's going to give you a lot of value as well. And she's just good in pretty much all the content. The shield is incredibly valuable and potent, and her just overall kit seems to be really, really strong. So I hope you build her, and I hope that you have just as much fun as we did clearing floor 12 and demonstrating her in the talent book domain. Well, that's it for Diona. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Maiden's build and its incredible flexibility in primary stats. If you liked the video, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. I publish content each week about Genshin Impact, from new builds to farming routes that may help you in the journey ahead. I also stream live Sunday through Friday on Twitch, starting at 9pm New York time. Hope to see you there. Well, that's it for this one. I hope you have a great time playing Genshin Impact, and see you on the next video.